Good evening, viewers across the globe. This is Platform Media International Political Arena. Tonight, we are still on the contentious political issues in Edo State, Nigeria. And there are two political um, elephants who are fighting for the soul of Edo State. And as a result, Platform Media International is taking you to this uh, issues surrounding the political issues in Edo State that will culminate in the election in September who, to, who, that, in choosing who will become the next governor of Edo State. And of course, you know that there are two political parties looking to occupy the Osadibay House come September 2020. Tonight, I have a very interesting personality. Interesting personality in the sense that uh, this guy I'm bringing to the studio today is uh, based in Stockholm, Sweden, but he has a lot of political influence back home in Edo State. I'm talking about Dr. Michael Imalo. Huh? Dr. Imalo, huh? welcome to the Studio Platform Media International. Thank you, Joe. It has, been a, it has been a while, Doctor. Uh, I saw you last uh, 40 years ago when we were, uh, when we were in school. And here we are. Um, net, um, <laughs> technology has brought us together. And of yes. course, we're happy that we are making waves in the Do State politics. An uh, interesting thing, which of course you will tell you are shortly is that you, you tend to have some influence on who becomes the governor of Edo State come September, correct? Well, um, I have my own opinion. I have my own political calculation. Uh, but uh, <laughs> God will know who will really be the governor, but I have my own opinion, yes. Okay, I didn't know that you guys, politicians, also count on God. I thought you guys already decided it. <laughs> all, power, all power belongs to God. Okay, you know, yeah. doctor, it's becoming is uh, the 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 issue now is this that you, until recently, you are you are a member of the People Democratic Party (PDP). Are you still there? Uh, officially, I have uh, moved over. I've crossed over to APC. Uh, in the past few months, I actually sat down and tried to analyze uh, governance in Nigeria since, since the beginning of this present dispensation, 1999. I tried to find out how uh, politics impacted on my people. I'm from Edo State. I'm from the kingdom called Ewohim uh, in Asia land, Asia land. So I tried to, to find out how politics impacted on my people since the past 21 years. You know, if I want to do a little bit of calculation for you, you will see that PDP was in power in Nigeria for 16 years at the federal level. And in Edo State for 10 years. And during those the, during the past 21 years, PDP has won the senatorial election and House of Reps election in Esalen, which is Edo Central Senatorial District. I did my own analysis. I found out that there's no single legacy of PDP in Ewohim, my town, for the past 21 years. Not a single legacy. And the only time we've had any little infrastructural development in my town since the past 21 years. It was when Osiomoni, his ACN, or now uh, APC, you know, came to power in Edo State. So I decided that I have to, you know, join the party that has the interests of my people at heart. So, yes, I've crossed over to APC. Um, Dr. Mike, uh, you just, <laughs> viewers will want to know why it took you so long to reach such a decision. Because you said 21 years, and you are just making that decision right now. What is yes. why it took you that long? Yes, it's like um, one has been as asleep, politically asleep, but now I'm awake. 
You understand? You know, uh, in just like in every other case in life, you you need to be patient and give a chance to whoever deserves it to see if there will be changes. So it, it is it is not unusual that I just realized it. I have been politically blind. Believe you me, since the past 21 years, I've been politically blind, trusting PDP, you know, to impact on my people. But it just crossed my mind. I just found out that I have been blind politically. It's like they say in the Bible, I have been blind, but now I see. So now I see, so I decided to move over. over. Mike, given the fact they are one of those people who who were who cap who was who, no one one of uh, the PDP members that was taken over by the articulated favor during the article regime. Yes. I was, uh, you know, I will still have to take you back there. Yeah, because, I understand. Yeah. Actually, I I coined that word articulated. I coined that word articulated from article. Even though Article does not know to this day, neither does PDP, uh, you know, uh, the, the people who are running PDP, they don't know that. But I can tell you today that on the day, on the, on the, on the 3rd of December 2007, when Article crossed over from APC to PDP in preparation for his campaign to be the presidential candidate of PDP, that same day, I coined the name Articulated from Article. And I used my platforms on, on the social media, you know, to popularize it. And it became a household word and a household slogan during the 2019 presidential election. I did that. Yeah, I understand. It is like I told you. You know, Article, for instance, I have, I have always believed in him. It's even when, since when he was vice president of the, of, uh, the Federal Republic, uh, with uh, Olisha Gwambasanjo, I've always believed in him. So I was so elated, I was so excited on the 3rd of December 2017 when he crossed over to, to PDP. And then I said, I must join this man. But like I told you, yes, I worked for PDP. I worked for PDP for many years. In fact, I, I, for many years, I, I, I was secretary of PDP Sweden chapter. At the time, I was chairman of PDP Sweden chapter. And I related, you know, you know, in great details with PDP National Secretary, I mean, PDP National Secretariat over the years. Like I said, I have been blind, but now I see. Yeah, I know you, you can see clearly now, but one thing the viewers are not seeing clearly is the fact that uh, you are busy in Sweden. What influence do you have well, on the political affairs in Edo State, considering the distance? Well, uh, I go to Nigeria every three months from Sweden. I travel every three months. I go to Nigeria. I spent, when I spent two months here, I spent another one month in Nigeria. That's how I've been doing it. My family is based in Nigeria. Don't you so, think you'll make more impact when you are in the thick of things? Yeah, that's true. But you see, Joe, I'm not a political jobber. I work here in Sweden. I'm not, I don't, I'm not fighting for political appointment or contract. So I'm not a political jobber. I'm a politician because I think of the interests of my people. So I must earn a living. That's correct. So that I won't, so that, so that I won't join the crop of corrupt politicians in Nigeria. I won't be forced to be corrupt. One thing I wonder, Mike, one thing I wonder, you and I, we, we knew each other way back in our high school days. <laughs> You know, uh, we were in high school when um, Abba Fami Awolowo and Shewu Shagari uh, con uh, contested in, in, the, in the 80s. Now, that seems to be like heaven, considering yes. day, night and day, considering the kind of politics of Abbas, um, Awolowo and Shagari played. Shagari, we can identify what, are, what, is, what is his program were then, Green Revolution. Yes. Uh, yes. uh, he, he also mentioned uh, uh, what qualitative education. Uh, yes. about, uh, I will always said free education. You know, yes. those are the cardinal points that this book. So what are the what are the cardinal 
election programs. For this party, you are in both of them now. You're, you've been PDP, you're moving to APC. You, can you identify, is there anything we can identify with this political party, a PDP and APC, or it just conch up politics? That's the language yes. in Nigeria. Yes, I'm glad you asked this question. During the first republic that you mentioned, that was when we played politics of ideology. And you also had political parties that were based on ideologies. You could rec recognize that PDP was a social democratic party. You could recognize that uh, NPN, no, not PDP, what do you call it, UPN that time, was a social democratic party. You could recognize that NPN was a conservative party. But you understand? Those were the two major parties that time. You know, because you could identify their you know, respective uh, uh, ideologies from their programs for the people. That was the way it was then. But now, I mean, it's, it's, it's just politics of no ideology. What do you call Amala, Amala, Amala politics? Amala politics, Agbero politics, yes. They, they don't, if, you, if you look at the, 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 the APC, the, the, is my party now, we call ourselves the party of the progressives. Hallelujah. Uh, I can say that. You see, but there's no difference between, between APC and PDP when you, when you talk of ideology or principles. No difference. They are just the same. You understand? Because that's why it's so easy. I don't even know whether that is why it's so easy for people to jump from one party to another. When, it, when they see that it's going to favor them in one party, they jump. If it's not favoring the, the other person, they, 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 they jump. Because there's no clear cut difference between APC and PDP in terms of ideology. It is in this new dispensation that you started seeing that. As a matter of fact, even from 1999 to 2014, you could still see some kind of little differences between uh, PDP, AMPP, that time, or AD, or ACN. But from 2015, when a PC was formed, became a conglomerate of uh, uh, other sponsored par parties to challenge PDP. You don't see some difference ideologically between the two parties. That's so the thing. You, you're crossing over to a PC. What are you going to tell the people where you come from? That yes. is what you are going into a PC so that you have to convince them. That's the reason why I'm going. What are you going yes. to APC now to, 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 on what platform or what basis? Yes. Yeah, the, the conviction now is not going to be ideological conviction. I don't need to convic con convince them that it is because of ideology, purpose of ideology that I'm crossing over to APC. No, because there's no difference between the, the ideology of APC and of PDP. I will let them know the reason why I have crossed over, which I've already, I've already you know, disseminated that news back home. You actually, I ought to be at home now because of this uh, electionary period. It's because I can't travel. I ought to be in Nigeria since, since April, but I'm standing here because the, the, the shit. I seem to have lost uh, Dr. Malohan now. I'm sure there's a um, uh, technical issue, uh, which I'm, I'm very confident he will going to rectify some. Here, here he comes. Yeah, yes, sorry. So the call, yes. So the call okay, came in. OK. Hmm. Yeah. So like I was saying, I ought to be in Nigeria since April, but I'm stranded because all, uh, all the ports are closed in Nigeria and even in Europe here. I'm just waiting for them to, to pronounce that they have opened airports to international flyer. So I'll fly, fly back home. So, but what I'm going to use to convince my people is what I just told you now. It's only APC or from ACN to APC that I want you people, my people have, have gained from since 1999. PDP has done nothing, even though I want you people have been faithful since 1999 to PDP. But they've not done anything. They've not had any impact on my people. Nothing to show in a way, not a single project. But in a way, you have road projects, schools renovated, hospitals renovated, roads rebuilt, reconstructed. In a way, by, by APC, by Osio Money, when he was governor. You understand? That is what okay. I'm going to use to convince them. Okay, Mike, uh, you, have, you have hurdles in front of you. Let me just enumerate them. Okay. 
APC now has Pastor Eze Yamu. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no difference between, um, there's little difference between a leopard <laughs> and, uh, and uh, a cheetah and a cat. <laughs> and a cat. They, are, they all belong to the same family. Uh, yes. Uh, Eze Yamu was in PDP. He moved over to APC. Uh, go again, mm -hmm. that illustrates the reason why you said. It's not the politics of ideology anymore. It's cash no, and carry no. and mala politics. When yes. our interest is on, so we move over. And it's yeah, not yes. yes. Remember that the same Oshomole four years ago has destroyed Pastor mm. Yamu. From all intents and purposes, and from what we can observe from here, Eze Yamu mm. was badly damaged by what Oshomole mm. said about him four years ago. Don't you mm. think? Is an unsellable product. He is an unsellable product. Can you market a product that will be damaged? How are you going to market that? Well, uh, you are right. It was a huge onslaught from Oshomali on Eze Yam in 2016. But you see, in 2016, you know, in politics in Nigeria, is the winner carries all. You know that. And to win, you have to really strike. When you strike, you strike hard. So that's what Oshio Mole did in 2016. He was striking Eze Yamu so hard because he needed to sell his candidate. You see, the candidate Oshio Mole was selling in 2016. If not for Oshio Mole, he did not stand any chance against Eze Yamu. So Oshio Mole needed to really strike hard on Eze Yamu so that uh, uh, his candidate of basket could win. So that's why he said all those things. Mike, Mike, said, Mike. It, it was just see, we're, all, we're all in the Western world. You are in, you are, you are in Sweden. I mean, Canada mm. here. Uh, mm. There's a difference. If you, mm. if you attack somebody based on principles, it is mm. allowed based on ideology. It's an mm. acceptable norm in politics. Yes. But when you attack somebody based on his person, his mm. his records personally mm. is mm. something that is indelible. Uh, mm. Eze Yamu, he accused him of belonging to a court. He accused him of killing people, dis uh, and harming people. He accused mm. him of fraud. That was, those yes. are personal issues that would be yes. difficult That's what I was to telling erase. You That's what I was saying. He, he was striking hard. Those things he was saying, have they been proved to be true? Have they really been, somebody can accuse somebody and take someone to court, but, but those things that, that, those accusations have to be proven to be true. They, so, it was politics, it was, it was propaganda. So, so, it, so we, we, we haven't, they, nobody has proved that those things that he really did. It. So, so he, he, was, he was trying to win an election for his candidate. So he was striking hard and he was hitting. Uh, is a yam so hard where it hurts? So, so if he, if uh, Oshomale is a hard hitter, how are we, uh, now the question becomes: Do we trust him again? What he's telling us about Obaseki? What um, what is what is uh, what, what, what moral ground is uh, Oshomale standing now? And how do you well, want uh, those people to believe him? Well, Nigerian politics, there's no morality. I can say that. There's no morality in Nigerian politics. Like I said, it's winners take off. But you see, um, Oshomole, anyone who undermines Oshomole's political chest, Oshomole's power and influence and structure in Edo state politics, that person does so at his own risk. I think you understand. You see, uh, there might be question of credibility when he's trying to, to as he's trying to sell is in Yamu now. But it's not, to me, it is not left for Ezei Yamu to sell himself. It may not really be, be Oseomoli today who's going to sell Ezei Yamu. Ezei Yamu need to face Edo people by himself and sell himself and talk to them by himself so he can regain back that credibility. So he can disabuse the minds of Edo people, you know, against those onslaught, those things that were said, said about him in 2016. It is now his duty to come out on his own. 
there may be question of credibility on the part of Rusio Maleo to sell Eze Yamu now. But Eze Yamu is in the position to sell himself now. Why, why has Osiomali assumed the power of God in politics of Edo State when he was the one who was very averse to such politics being played in Edo State, remember? He yeah. called yeah. Mr. Fixi, Chief Adneni, and told Edo people that the politics of Godfatherism is dead. Why is mm -hmm. he coming up with that? What, 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 why? <laughs> But well, someone is not trying to be a godfather in another state. So what is he trying time, to do? You see, l l let me tell you what happened. In 2016, eh, like I said before, he fought hard for Obaseki. The problem we had, the, the reason why Obaseki found himself in a hole was because he really didn't understand how he became governor of those state. To be elected governor in Nigeria is not a tea party. You understand? What happened was Osiomole fought hard so I did all the, all the lobbying, all the expenditure, all the campaign. At every campaign forum, Osiomali was the one talking. So he didn't really know what it took to make him governor of Edo State. Do you understand? So Osiomali won the election and said, come, come and sit here and be governor, be ruling Edo State. That was what happened. You see, so I didn't know. Ma Michael, Michael, yeah, Michael yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just mentioned something which, which would diminish both of us. I'm in the Western world, you are there. Well, yeah. look at the language you just used. Come and sit here and be governor. Yes. <laughs> Who does that? That, that? that was what happened, my brother. You see, uh, 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 amongst APC leaders in Edo State, Obaseke wasn't the choice. So why would they bring him? Why did they bring him? Yeah, because he played a role. He played an active role in, 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 in formulating economic and financial policies in his government. I so he found, he, was, him, he found it capable, correct? Yes. yes he found so it capable. What has changed? No, what has changed now? You, mean, you know the crisis now. You know how they've been quarreling. Because? You know, you know, you know, you know uh, their passion. Because, because, because no. Obaseki is saying that uh, Oshomole wants him to be sharing the, uh, the state cake to every term they can hurry, even to the, even to the doubts and the no, tracks. That's not true. That is not true. I, I, I wasn't in APC then, though, but I can tell you that's not true. Even where you live in Canada and all over the world, eh, when an election is fought and won, eh, the people who were involved in fighting the elections, one way or the other, they are compensated, either by way of political appointment or by way of little contract here and there. It's done all over the world. You don't go and bring and in the and not the brazen no, no. sharing of money to people. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean that you don't share money. You can make people, you can appoint, you can make people, give people political appointments to, to, to compensate them for helping you to win election. Give, give them contracts. But this is what it, the moment he won election, what I understand eh, from APC people, the moment Obaski became governor, he shut his door against everyone who fought for him to win the election. It's not done anywhere in the world. He shut his door against them. He wouldn't pick their call. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't you know, allow, allow them into government house anymore. Then these people now went to see him and said, look, oh, this guy, you brought him. He has become governor and he has shut his door against us. Okay. There is now, 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 the question that viewers want to know, Mike, is this. Mm. You are based in Sweden, where, where Nigerians would describe as the land of milk, uh, milk and honey. Yes. So why the interest that you want to go to back to uh, uh, Nigeria to go and play politics where everything that, goes? That, I told you before, it is the interest of my people. Okay, it's not right, because I'm it. looking for a politi political okay. appointment got or it. contract. So how, the, I, next, the next question I'll ask, how are you going to fit in? You're a decent man. You are, yes. you, are, you are fulfilled in your choosing career in Sweden. Yes. So yes. You, are, you are going back to Nigeria to go and contend with people who belong to courts, who would like to kill, <laughs> to get position, who would like it's to not, remain. So how are you going to fit in? Let me tell you something. It's not every, every politician in Nigeria that is a courtist or that is uh, an agbe that, that behaves most like an agbe. Most, most of them are. are. No, you see, let me tell you, my, in, my, in my place, for instance, the leader of APC in my place, his name is Victor Boybe. 
He's a complete gentleman. He's a complete gentleman. He's averse to violence. It's a, in fact, before he will even answer you, when you even when you are talking back at, at him, when you are casting aspersions at him, he takes he takes his time before he will answer you. He's a complete okay. gentleman. So there are three people like that. He sent okay. now, politicians now, in, a now, one, in, in Nigeria. Okay. Mike, he sent Mike, politicians like him. Mike, Mike, listen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. Victor Ibuwebe was was a senior was our senior in yeah, high one year school. Ahead of her. One yes. year ahead of us in high school. Yes. Most of my classmates that were spoken to over the years, they have nothing mm. complimentary to talk about Vito Obegbe. So the same thing you are accusing Obaseki of now. Vito Obegbe, they say, is arrogant. Uh, of course, he has, he, he, he has not shown any, any capability of even responding to that because he's arrogant. So let me tell you, Joe, he's, when you are he's very sloppish. No, I don't believe you. When you are when you are seeing somebody from a distance, from a far distance, there's a tendency for you to think different negative things about that person. Arrogancy, snobbish, you know, uh, things like that. But what you have, it's not, these people, this is not my conclusion. This is a conclusion yeah. of, I, I, of aggregate, you, I aggregate ideas. Uh, yeah, these people who, who form that aggregate, aggregate idea, they have not really come close to Victor Eboibu. If they do, they wouldn't call him arrogant. Okay. Believe me. So, from one to ten, what are the chances of his AM in the next election, from your estimation? Let me tell you something. The, 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 the flashpoint in this election, in this Edo State election, is Edo South. Edo, that, Edo South Central District. That is that's the flashpoint. Yes. You know, they have 50% of the total vote in, in, in Edo State. The, the, other, the other 50 is shared by Edo North and Edo Central. Eh? And that's where, the, that's where they are going to fight. Both of them are from the same Edo South, Obaseki and Ezeyam. Hmm? But that is where they are going to concentrate on. If you can win Edo South, your, it's finished. You just collect both of, them, both, from, of them, both of them are from Edo South. Yes. So if you can win Edo South, you see, it's gonna. Uh, it's, you, not, it's not. It's not your Uhuru for Basi. They're going to change to a. Are you undermining the power? PDP. Aren't you undermining the power of incumbency? Power of incumbency. Yes. I know. No, forget that. That's, that matters it's, a lot too. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it would matter if you performed excellently. As an incumbent, if you performed excellently, then you have uh, an advantage. Okay. But has Obaseki performed excellently as governor of Edo State? Okay, Doctor Mike, I I just have to. We are running out of time. I want to uh, run. I just want to thank you. Uh, it's been years, forty years. We yeah, are yeah. we are the eighties uh, grad graduates of our of PBG. Yes, and I'm yeah, happy I to see you. Yes. You're looking good, in good head, and, uh, you too. and my, and my regards <laughs> to your you. family. Uh, it's good to see you again after how many years now? Forty years. Forty, 40 years, years or, for, or above forty, thanks 40 to years. technology. Yes. Forty years, thanks to technology, and I'm happy yes. for you. And I just wish you the best of luck, and Thank I you very hope much. the best wins for those state. And uh, we will have the postmortem after the election. I, I want okay. to have you here. I'm, I'm sure you are bludgers. Yes, no problem. Anytime. Viewers, that's uh, Dr. Michael Imalohan, a political analyst based in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Ehizode, from our studios in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I want to say, have a happy night, Tress, and Dr. Malohan, I will see you again. I'm regards to your family. Viewers, catch Thanks. us on, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on our news and breaking news. Have a good night and have a happy night. Bye-bye.